Good morning, church, and a warm welcome to you on this powerful Good Friday. On this Friday where blood was shed for you and for me. On this Friday where the love of our life went to the cross on Calvary for you and for I. This is a day of power. This is a day of miracles. This is a day that Jesus did great and mighty things. And despite what the devil puts in your mind this morning, Jesus came to turn your disappointment into an appointment. He has come to turn your life around. He has come to change you, my friend, this morning. As you watch the service with us, as you join us this morning, I believe that that God is going to release that same power that, that was with him on the cross on the day of Calvary. That same power that came, that brought death to life. Oh, Karabasa. The same power that was with Christ Jesus on the cross that day. When he said, it is finished. He released unto you and unto I. The blood of Jesus that comes and cleanses us from all our sin. My friend, this morning, if you are struggling with sin, I want to encourage you that the blood of Jesus will come and deliver you and wash you white as snow this morning. As the body was offered on the cross of Calvary, in that same way, the provision of God has already been given to you and to I. This morning, as we receive the word of God, as we partake in the service, I believe that that the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ will be our portion this day. That in that alone we will see and sense the power of the Almighty God. Enjoy the service with us this morning.
For the Easter weekend and what it represents to us and I'm so happy that I can come and share my testimony with you this morning. So many of you know and have been praying for me that last week Friday I had an emergency operation um, and it was quite a shock to me because I'm normally on the other side of the table um, but I just wanted to come and say thank you to God and thank you to everyone who prayed and interceded with me and my family for my healing and I believe that I'm healed this morning in Jesus name. Um, as you know, that this is the first Easter without my dad and this morning I was sitting and reflecting on Easter and what Easter means to me as a person and I was actually speaking to Jared, my husband, and telling him how Easter for me, um, the preaching during the Easter weekend changed my life as a child. And as I was saying to Jared, listening to my dad preach the sermon on the power of the blood of Jesus, I remember as a little girl being so mesmerized at how that blood could save all of humanity, could wipe all our sins as white as snow. And as I was saying to Jared this morning, as a little girl watching my father preach those sermons on the blood and the power of the blood of Jesus, I was taken back to how mesmerized I was by that message, that that blood that was shed on Calvary so, so many years ago is the same blood that is powerful enough to save us from our sin today, to heal us from our sickness today, to bring deliverance in our lives today, and so this morning, I'm just here to declare that same blood of Jesus over you. You know, when I was so sick, I um, got sick very suddenly, so I actually worked. On Thursday during the day, I saw all my patients and did my normal job. And I came home and I wasn't feeling so well. And Jared said to me, it's fine, I have something to eat and then go and lie down. And then in the middle of the night, I woke up and I felt incredibly unwell. And I found myself laying on the floor um, in our bathroom. And I literally, I just cried out to Jesus and I said, the blood of Jesus. And I said, Jesus, you really have to help me here because it's me and Jared at home alone. And I was really just distraught and thinking, God, what is happening to me? And um, it really, it was a very frightening time for me and my family. And Jared phoned my mom past the bed and she got on the road with Matthew and Yaziel and they came to look after Christian and Jared rushed me to the hospital. And as I lay there, I, was overwhelmed by this feeling of fear and anxiety and you know the bible says that peace cannot exist with fear and faith cannot exist with fear because it is the opposite of jesus right so jesus is the author and the jesus is the author of our peace so obviously fear comes from the devil um, and as i was laying there the holy spirit was saying to me you have the peace of god and I was reminded of my dad so much laying there in the hospital bed. And um, I was thinking how through my life I've witnessed my dad go through many struggles. And me myself have gone through many storms. Um, but my dad always lived a life of peace in Jesus. And what do I mean when I say peace? I mean when you looked at us and our family and when you looked at him, you could never tell the storms that were raging in the background and the storms that were raging in his health and the storms that might have been raging in his finances and the storms that might have been raging in his life, but you saw the peace. So I'm here to tell you that that peace comes from Jesus and that peace cannot be bought, that peace cannot be gotten from man, that peace comes from the Lord. And you know, as I lay there and the doctor was busy with me and I had to be rushed to a different hospital because there wasn't any beds and they told me I needed an operation. I felt so overwhelmed, right? So 
For those of you who know me, I'm a bit of a control freak, so I like to be in control of everything. But I, I felt so overwhelmed, right, by my circumstance. And I'm sure many of you can relate that often you feel overwhelmed by your circumstance. Sometimes it's circumstances of sickness, like it was for me, but sometimes it's circumstances of your finances, you're struggling, circumstances in your home, your marriage with your children, circumstances in your job, circumstances in life. Um, if we're facing a pandemic still and we're still fighting this COVID-19 and it's a circumstance that can make you feel incredibly overwhelmed. And as I lay there and I was overwhelmed, I was waiting to go to theatre and my mom and Jared and everyone was phoning and sending messages of encouragement. But in my spirit, I was so unsettled and I felt so overwhelmed. And then suddenly the nurse came in and she said, it's time for you to go. And they rushed me to the theatre. And um, as I lay there waiting to go in, this very nice male nurse came and spoke to me. And as he spoke to me, he spoke with such judgment of doctors and the medical profession. And um, he called me by my name and he said, oh, you're obviously Muslim. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm a born again Christian. And then he was taken aback and he said, oh, you say that you're a Christian. I know many Christians. And um, he was so negative. And then I said, you know, sir, um, I'm here to tell you that the God I serve is a God of love and the God I serve is a God of peace and that God wants to know you and he longs to have a relationship with you and me saying that I'm a born again Christian has nothing to do with a religious belief or me trying to dictate to you what I believe but it has everything to do with showing you my testimony and my love for Jesus and how my love for Jesus and God's love for me has changed my life and you know as I ministered to him and I lay there in that bed feeling very exposed and very anxious and very afraid I felt how the peace of God washed over me as I spoke to this man and you know as we were speaking he would say things and the inner man in me would want to just jump out and say who do you think you are and don't say those stupid things but the God in me said that this man is broken and that he needs the Lord and as I ministered to him and they were preparing the theater and I was going in he said to me you know Dr. Knight I'm so glad that I met you today and you know as I went in I felt this overwhelming peace of God because I knew that in that moment God was in our midst and so long story short, I had the operation and I'm on the road to recovery and I believe that I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. But what I want to tell you is that when I came home, I was sitting very quietly and speaking to the Lord and the Holy Spirit gave me this word. And the word is that peace is not an inward feeling that holy people subscribe to, but peace is a manifestation of your faith in the Lord Jesus. And what does that mean? Is that peace is not just this inward thing that we as Christians speak about. It is an outward manifestation of our faith in the Lord. Because if we have faith in a God, faith in Jesus, the same Jesus that died on the cross for us, then we can walk in perfect peace. We can walk in perfect health. We can walk in perfect prosperity. So it does not then matter what is happening around you you will always be in perfect peace right amen can i get an amen for that so i just wanted to come on here and share my testimony and share the goodness of god and tell you that god desires for us to walk in that perfect peace jesus loved us so much the most famous scripture that god god loved us so much that he sent jesus his only son he could have sent anybody but he sent Jesus to die for our sins. And so this morning, as you reflect on Easter and what it means for you as a person, I want to encourage you that there is a real savior that wants to bring peace into your life, peace into your situation, peace into your home, if you will invite him in. Can we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we can celebrate that you died and rose again. I thank you, God, that the same blood that was shed on Calvary is the same blood that comes and meets us at the point of our need this morning. It meets us at the point of our sickness. It meets us at the point of our anxiety. It meets us at the point of our fear and inadequacies. Father God, this morning, I thank you that you are Jehovah and that you still meet us 
where we are. You still meet us where we find ourselves this morning. And so, Father, I thank you for your peace and I thank you for your blood. And I pray, Lord God, that every person that watches the service this morning, that their lives will be filled with your peace this morning. Father God, that they would apply the blood of Jesus over every situation, doesn't matter how big and how small, but they would apply the blood of Jesus and watch the miracles take place, that they would put their faith in action and experience your peace in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know that there are brothers and sisters out there who have fallen away from you, who may not know you. And I ask that this morning, that this weekend, they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father God, we know that the preaching of the cross is our salvation this morning. And it is our breakthrough and it is our redemption and it is our ticket against the devil this morning. And so Father, I ask that you would bring those brothers and sisters to repentance this morning. Father, draw them nearer to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are here with us. And we thank you, God, that you are the Prince and the author of our peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. So family, I just trust that you will be blessed by this message preached by my father, Apostle Chris Naidu. And I pray that this message, as it has impacted my life, it will impact your life this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Seek the Lord. Obey the voice of God. Obey the scriptures. Don't obey your flesh. Don't obey others. The Bible says, I read this morning, you cannot even consider your wife or your children or this one or that one. You must obey God. If you want to enter in to the promise and benefit from the new covenant that Jesus made and sealed with his blood. It's an agreement. It's a will that has many, many, many blessings. Doesn't matter how tough it is. How painful it is. He will not fail. Cannot fail. And Jesus proved it to us. He will never fail us. In Jesus' name. Close your eyes. And bow your head. Say thank you Lord. For your sacrifice. Your sacrifice. Is an example. Of my life. Of this earth. I have to face. So many things. But I thank you. I draw strength out of your determination to fulfill your purpose. I pray, Jesus, that you will give your Holy Spirit to me in power so that he can strengthen me to be strengthened to continue to fulfill my journey. Holy Spirit of God, I thank you. You're with me. You're in me. You are there to help me. Pick me up. And I'm weak. Lord God, I know even as you spoke on this earth, I will do greater things than you have done because you go to the Father. So help me, Jesus, in the same way, through every challenge. I keep my eyes and focus on my purpose of this earth. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Let me pray. Father, thank you. You are our helper. You said in your word, and when you were on earth, I will send you the helper. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that helps us in our weaknesses, and leads us to our destination. I worship you and praise you for every person that is here. I have no doubt you would not have brought us together. If you were going to leave us halfway, you're going to take us all the way. We are more than conquerors. And 
together, we will make this journey. He said, when two of us shall agree, you'll do it for us. Do it, Lord. Do miracles physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. Do it for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Then verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, say it with me, it is finished. What is finished? The process. So that the purpose can be established. Bowing his head. Gave up. His spirit. My title this morning was going to be, It is Finished, and I'm going to close now. What was finished? The work that God intended him to do. Healing, bring healing to us. Deliverance. He said, I became poor. The Bible said that Jesus became so poor. He became so poor. Jesus. He came, he, Jesus was in poverty. He came from all the prosperity, here you can see it, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Verse number 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he came from heaven, no lack, no short. Yet, for your sakes, for my sake. He became poor. Came from heaven, became poor. Didn't even have a place to sleep. That you and me, through his poverty, might become rich. Hallelujah. Jesus also paid the price for poverty, sickness, disease, sin. Abuse. All the stuff that we spoke about that we go through. He paid the price. That's why he could say everything has been accomplished according to the scriptures. And he sealed the covenant, the agreement, the agreement that God has with his children. He sealed that with his own blood. That's what we're celebrating now. Jesus finished. His blood flowed. Shoved the sword in his side. Blood and water gushed out. That stream that Jesus spoke about. Drink of me. If you drink of this water, you'll thirst again. If you drink of the waters I give you, you will never thirst again. So while we are connected to the fountain for life, the blood of Jesus, that's why we spoke about the blood to wash us. Connect to the blood. Like Esther spoke about that transfusion, connect to the blood of Jesus. And the word, washing of the, the water that flowed is the word of God. You must have, your, have, your, have yourself washed in the word of God, bathed in the word of God all the time. What must we do to enter into all these things? Here it is, finally. Put it on the screen. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse number three. I will close my notes. We are finished now. Listen to what the Bible says. How shall we escape if we neglect, say neglect, so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Listen to me. The way to enter into all of the blessings and promises that God has made available through the death of Jesus, don't neglect your salvation. If you are saved, be saved. 
Thank you for joining us this morning. And I believe that those words were not just words coming out of the man of God. That was words directly coming from the heart of God. And it was spoken with the anointing of God. And the word of God declares that the anointing shall come and destroy all all the yoke. This morning I want to encourage you my friend, no matter how you're feeling, if you have fallen short of the glory of God, if you are feeling despondent, if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling lonely, if you are feeling defeat, if you are feeling hopeless, this morning I want to encourage you that there is a God that died on the cross for you. That today is Friday but Sunday is coming where God is going to release and show you how faithful he is and how he has has risen from the grave. And I just want to declare to you, despite how you are feeling this day, I want you to remember that there was someone that loved you so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life and we could walk in holiness and we could walk in abundance and we could walk in righteousness and we can walk in his free flow. My friend, I just feel that, you know, there's some people struggling out there. There's, there's substance abuse. There is um, emotional issues. I want to declare to you that Jesus died on the cross for your healing this morning physical sickness this morning. I just speak over your life, the healing of God, the blood of Jesus that flew down the cross of Calvary was not for, for, for a joke or mediocre life, but it was so that we could walk in a miraculous, loving, powerful, awesome life that God has intended for us. So I want you to be blessed on this Friday. Thank you for joining us. I want you to link up with us on the telephone number appearing on the screen below. Our church secretary will be more than welcome to uh, uh, connect with you and to, uh, uh, to connect you with one of our pastors or leaders that will pray with you and walk with you. And uh, we want you to know that you are not alone. You are not forsaken. Jesus loves you. He loved you enough to die for you. And we love you with the love of the Lord, connect with us in Jesus' mighty name. Let us receive the benediction of the Lord. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with us until we meet Jesus face to face. And all the people of the Lord said, Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. May the joy of the Lord be your strength this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.